This video is literally where the rubber hits the road for the autonomous vehicle. I will be training our first policy model using the standard behavior cloning approach. I will walk through the main steps of collecting the training data, training, and finally the testing and actual autonomous driving. Behavior cloning seems to be a common choice on some open source self-driving platforms. So it's a good starting point to see how our solution goes. This video is number seven in the overall project. The project is to build a deep learning Raspberry Pi controlled autonomous vehicle. The project will cover the system from end to end, from building the hardware, the base RC chassis, and attaching the Raspberry Pi and the associated electronics, and then getting it all working. It then works through the planning and development of the software that controls it all, as well as the training and the testing of various machine learning algorithms to see how well they go at line following. So far in the project, we have put together the hardware pieces needed for the vehicle and architected, written and tested the software that glues it all together. The one remaining piece needed to get this thing driving autonomously relates to the machine learning module. Here, we use a deep neural network to map from the incoming images and the recent history of speed and steering commands to predict the future speed and steering actions needed to drive. We've already defined the structure and connectivity of the model using a range of convolutional and fully connected layers. The model has around 24,000 parameters. Now all that's needed for driving is to somehow work out how to set the values for these parameters. In the remainder of this video, I will look at the standard behavior cloning approach. But firstly, some background. A quick primer on one of the most common and probably most successful approaches to machine learning, namely supervised learning. In supervised learning, we effectively have to teach the model by example. For a given input, we have to show it the correct output data or label. We then compare the model output, i.e. what the model currently calculates given the input, compare it to the correct label output, and use the error to feed back a small correction to the model and update its parameters. For this training to work, it typically needs a lot of labeled data, the more the better. To train, you run through the data multiple times, and eventually the model learns the correct mappings from the inputs to the given labels. Some typical applications you've probably seen before. Image classification, for example, say a hot dog detector, where you train the model to output a simple classification a yes or no answer. Or object detection and localization, where you train the model to output either a yes or no for an object, as well as the bounding box location for the object. So now back to our autonomous driving problem. Behavior cloning is simply the direct application of supervised learning for training the policy model. We use the vehicle camera images as inputs, and for the labels, we just need a collection of the matching, correct steering commands, which we can easily obtain by simply driving the vehicle around the track and recording the data. We can quite easily generate a large amount of suitable training data simply by driving. And then all we have to do is to use supervised learning to train the model, i.e. calculate the model output predictions, compare to the labels, feedback the errors, and update the model parameters. And with a bit of luck, the model should be able to accurately learn the mapping. So let's go and collect some training data. We need some kind of a track for the vehicle to drive around. I've gone for a simple dashed line to mark the track. I'm using standard window shading film. I happen to have used up all of the black roll, but here's some white for example. It comes in these large sheets with a removable backing. It's the type that clings to the window pane without adhesive. I firstly cut out long, 3 cm wide strips of it using a hobby knife, and then chop these pieces around 8 cm long. The dashed line is relatively easy to lay. I do a first pass to initially lay out the position of the dashed line, and as a second pass, using a damp cloth, I can make it cling pretty firmly to the wooden floor. This is an important step, 
as without it the vehicle easily disturbs the dashed markers. For the training data collection, I manually drive the vehicle as best I can, to try and closely follow the line, as if I were racing on a slot car track. I use Type VNC to access the Raspberry Pi, and a wireless keyboard connected directly to the Pi for driving. I did the data collection over three sessions, three slightly different track layouts. Overall, there were around 24,000 images, which is probably around 1.5 hours worth of driving. One advantage of the cling film approach is that I can easily lay out and remove the track. This ability to easily change the track is helpful for training a more robust model. Now after all of the manual driving, there is a bunch of collected data. Remember when constructing the vehicle software, there was a camera capture process that focused on the rapid capture of images at around 20 frames per second. And there was the image save process that, best effort, tried to save images to disk as fast as possible. It ended up taking around 0.2 to 0.3 seconds to save an image. And in parallel, we were saving the speed and steering data at around 20 samples per second. Now to use this data for training, as a first step, I parse it to generate clear sets of input and label data. Each saved image forms the basis of a training example. The training example inputs are the image, as well as the immediately preceding speed and steering data. The outputs, or label data, are the immediately following speed and steering data. With our parsed training data, we are now ready to train the model. I don't plan on going into the details of training, except to say I use Python, TensorFlow, and run it all in Jupyter Notebooks. I use common practices. I'm using Dropout throughout the model. I use the Atom Optimizer with a mean square error loss. I separate the data into training and test sets to evaluate the results. I don't use early stopping. And just a heads up, in these initial stages, I am only looking at predicting the future steering outputs. I will consider the speed prediction at a later stage. And the results? Well, training seemed to go okay, the loss function decreased, but rather than hitting you with numbers, probably the quickest way to demonstrate how training went is to let the trained model do a simulated run with some of the test data. What we're showing here will be a sequence of images from one of the training runs. On top of this image, we are superimposing the actual steering data, the little rectangles. They show the next one second worth of steering data that was actually used to drive the vehicle. They are color coded to better help understand. Highlighted red for turning left or blue when going straight or green when turning right. Also shown, the little colored circles are the actual predicted future steering commands predicted using the trained model. So if the training was any good, we expect these predicted steering commands should at least roughly track the actual steering commands that we use for driving. Now, stepping through the images, slowly at first. The results show that the model maybe does kind of get the concept of steering. There is a reasonable correlation between the actual and the predicted steering values. Now, let's jump to a real test, seeing how this trained model performs at actually driving the vehicle. After uploading the model to the Raspberry Pi, it's time to let it show off its newly acquired driving skills.
Well, as you can see, not the best. But also not that bad in many ways. After some initial false starts, it was able to do some consecutive laps. In the next video, I will try and understand some of the possible reasons for the actual driving results, and also look at some of the tweaks to the behavior cloning approach that may yield better results.